you know, the stuff I talk about is like 20 years in the future stuff. People aren't ready for it yet. Even though it's right in front of you. I spent 10 years every day, 24-7, seven, seven days a week. So maybe it's 30, 40 years in advance. I'm not sure. When you do the meditation, the study, the research, and that's all you focus on for 10 years, you, you step into a new realm, you know. When I say that everything is a word, that should be easy to understand. Everything is a word. In the beginning was the word, and Jesus spoke it all into existence. If Jesus is the word, then everything he spoke into existence has to be a word. It's really easy. And I'm saying this in humility. It might sound prideful, but I'm not being prideful. It's humility. Praise God for whom, from whom all blessings flow that He reveals these truths to His saints. <clears throat> that building in front of me is a word. It's a phrase. It's an object lesson. The building in front of me, any building, represents the body of Christ. When you type on a typewriter or a keyboard, each letter is symbolic of something else. When you hit the letter G on your keyboard, what does the letter G mean? Not only are you not only are you hitting the letter G, which means something else, it's 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 on a keyboard. You know, if you hit the letter G on your keyboard, it'll show up on the screen or on a type on a piece of paper. Typewriter, type and sh type. It's, that's why it's called type. Everything is a type and a shadow, which is a word. So when you hit the letter G, what are you hitting? <clears throat> You're hitting number seven. G is seven. It is finished. Golgotha, it is finished. If you go all the way back to the Phoenician script, the letter G also has a meaning of a hook, I think. I think that's what it is. You'll have to look it up. God is going to hook you up if you enter in by faith. Faith in the finished work of Jesus. If you hit the letter A, what does that represent? It represents the bullock, the bull, the blood sacrifice. <clears throat> it's absolutely obvious that everything is a word when you look at a tree tree true faithful faith it's upright it's faithful it's full of faith it's it's standing upright it represents faith it represents truth when you look at a tree upright it represents true faithful dependable the tree trunk represents sound doctrine Which holds the whole, the whole body of Christ together. Sound doctrine. Sound. Jesus spoke it. Why does the word sound mean stable and right and upright and all that? Because Jesus spoke it all in existence. His sound, their sound went into all the world preaching the gospel. The sound of the gospel went to the whole world. The reason I can speak with authority is because I know what I'm talking about. I spent 10 years every day studying this, meditating on it. No music, no TV, nothing. Just in 2017, I did watch some time travel movies the whole year. But 
I was decoding for 10 years. Still am, really. The disciples, their sound went into all the world. Teaching what? Sound doctrine. Speaking sounds. Their sound, the phonics, just like G. G-E, we bring good things to life. Oh, G. Somebody tells you something that surprised you. Oh, G. G's. Jesus. Somebody tells you something that you never thought about before. Oh, geez. G-E. Jesus. We bring good things to life. G-E. It's right in front of you. You're speaking the code every time you say, every time you say something. This is why it was so important. In school, you might say, well, why did they try to teach us grammar? G. G's. Somebody says something, you say, oh, geez. Like that's shocking. Jesus. The phonics even tell you the truth. And when you first see this, you say, how's that possible? How's that even possible? How can the phonics preach, preach Jesus? How can the letters, how can the words, how can the sentence, how can everything preach Jesus? Because God split the languages up. God controls the language and it has, to, everything has to point. The whole, look, the whole world will be filled with the glory of God. And there always has to be a forerunner. I know for a fact I'm 20 years in advance with this knowledge. I'm speaking 20 years at least, maybe 30s in advance with this, with this knowledge. I know it. Because it's so obvious, as plain as the nose on your face, but people can't hear it. <laughs> Why are the clouds loud? The clouds in the sky right in front of you, they're very loud. And you say, you say what do you mean? They look quiet to me. They're just floating. Yeah, but they're right in your face. It's loud. It's meaning it's right in your face. And the letter C goes back to agape. And so when you look at a cloud, you're looking at water. It rains on the just and the unjust. C. L-O-U-D, right? Loud. The clouds are preaching the grace of God. God is in your face every day with the clouds showing you that it rains on the just and the unjust. They try to snuff out my code. Just like the two witnesses in tribulation. They try to shut down the two witnesses. They even cut their head off. Try to cut their head off, kill them, or whatever. Defame you, lie about you, put fake fake stuff up. They try to make you... I know my identity. I know who I am. I know what I've done and not done. And all their lies are just lies. They have to shut down. If, if you're 20 years advanced in your knowledge about truth, the Bible, whatever you want to say, they got to shut you down. But they can't shut you down because there's always a forerunner. I'm not comparing myself with John the Baptist. There's no man greater than John the Baptist, right? There's no man, no, there's nobody as wise as Solomon. I'm not comparing myself with people of old, but I'm telling you, I did the work. I did the work. I'm saved by faith, but I did the work. I rightly divided that word my whole life, and I studied the decode for 10 years of that. I've done the work.
it wasn't me doing it, it was Christ in me. Because when I was younger, I thought, well, why is everybody else getting all this stuff? They're getting this house, they're marrying this, four or five kids, they're getting all this stuff, but he's, God's taking stuff away from me. Why is that? Couldn't figure it out. He was taking stuff away from me. Why? He had a plan. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. There always has to be a forerunner with the deeper knowledge or the deeper truths. And those people that helped me get to understanding where I'm at, yeah, that was great. Appreciate you. And I acknowledge you. Uh, I might not even be able to mention your names because I don't want the world attacking you and people attacking you, but I know who you are. When you're in communication with somebody back and forth with codes and knowledge and, and communication, you, you're going to ha have to protect those people. Because the devil's coming after them. There are people out there that can see past this thing. But you'll never know it. You'll never hear of them.